Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and I'm currently Boeing 737 captain but today we're not going to speak about the Boeing 737, we're going to speak about the ATR 42-72 airplanes because most of my career I spent flying ATRs. The ATR used to be my first aircraft to operate as a commercial pilot, as a first officer and I started my training in Uter, Russia then I flew in Siberia region and then I moved to Uter, Ukraine then I became a captain only three years after I became first officer and it's quite fast and in a couple of years I became type rating instructor on ATRs but later on I had to change my job and I moved to Garuda Indonesia to fly in Indonesia I was flying ATRs for around seven years and I have around 3600 hours on that aircraft type and also I used to fly ATR 42 as well as ATR 72 500 and the newest modification is ATR 72 600 which I was flying in Garuda Indonesia so I feel myself quite confident telling you the good things about this aircraft as well as the bad things the pros and cons so my friends here we go good things about the ATR and not so good actually guys there are no any perfect aircraft flying in our planet so far so every aircraft has its own disadvantages and of course advantages by the way guys ETR stands for Avion de Transport Regional which is in English should be around uh, regional air uh, transport like this right now what should I choose first to speak about good things or not so good things well you may see they're a little bit interconnected like Avionics, avionics, flight level 250, 250. So they all have good things and bad things in one airplane. Well, let's start from good one. Well, the first good thing about the ATR is avionics, flight instruments, automatic flight systems. And they are superb on ATR. As we know, it's a French Italian concern and they're making their airplanes in the same city in Toulouse of France, same city where Airbus makes its own production so the avionics very similar to airbus and it is superb i would say it's better on atr 72 600 we have five displays and they are very informative we have multifunction control display where you can find all the systems you need we have a very nice automatic flight control systems as well and the best feature i like about atr 72600 is electronic checklist so basically you have for example some kind of malfunction and you have the checklist which tells you what to do right away you have it on your central display and you just follow the items you don't need to look for a quick reference handbook it's just here on the screen it's very easy and it's very easy to fly the simulators on this airplane type but ATR airplanes are also in a lack of some automatic systems like we have on a Boeing for example there is no any VNAV button in a the cockpit there are some kind of modifications but I saw it only on the simulator so you need to press VNAV and the aircraft will follow the VNAV guidance here on ATR we just have a visual guidance but we don't have this VNAV button installed on the FGCP panel also there is no any auto throttle or auto thrust system so you put manually the power levers for takeoff position and you reduce the power while descent but in general guys i do like ATR 600 modification avionics for 500 version well it's more like boeing 707 classic and i don't really like it because there are some kind of steam gauges on a central desk and fe screens they are quite small but on new 600 it's masterpiece and next we go to takeoff and landing performance ATR 42 especially it can land with empty weight it can land on a 500 meter strip well it will never take off again from that strip because for takeoff you need more distance but I think even less than 500 is enough for landing of this airplane so performance the takeoff and landing performance is outstanding However, there is no any auto brake system like we have on a Boeing or Airbus, so we have to press brakes manually. And if you have short landing distance, you have to press very hard. I had even case with my tire got flooded because of the brakes temperature got very, very hot. And last month I just saw the news that ATR is going to produce ATR 42S modification, like iPhone S. Uh, so they will have 
auto brake installed on a new airplane version and they will have ground supporters to deploy it, uh, to be deployed upon landing so that will make the landing distance even shorter and they also promised to increase the engine power so the new ATR 42S would be absolutely comfortable to operate from 800 meters long runways and believe me there are many runways like this in Asia and next we go to aircraft handling well it handles quite well it has good response on a yoke on a pitch on the pedals even though this aircraft doesn't have hydraulic system on flight controls well it has some spoilers which deflect and help you to control the aircraft roll and reduces the required forces for your bank but in general it doesn't have any kind of hydraulic systems applied to main surfaces like or rather elevators and ailerons speaking in general guys i would say this aircraft will give you a real flight real manual flight experience because you just have mechanical linkage to the surfaces and you just feel the forces the aerodynamic forces acting on your flight controls that's superb but also it has advanced autopilot and yaw damper and if you have for example engine failure after takeoff and your yaw damper is on it deflects the rudder on required amount helps you to fight with this kind of malfunction and next guys we go to manuals the manuals the flight crew operation manual the flight crew training manual the qrh itself all those documents are well organized and you will be able to find everything very very fast and if you open the flight crew training menu you will see all those pictures explaining you and describing you how to fly this airplane it is very very understandable so i like the manual structure and next we move to aircraft operation well in general i would say this aircraft doesn't need all these ground facilities that we usually use for bigger aircraft like Boeing 737 and Airbus this aircraft for example doesn't need stairs because the aft door is the stairs itself so you just open it and the passengers will just go away also ATR has a special feature it doesn't have APU auxiliary power unit but it has the hotel mode operation so you can just switch it on and your propeller on the right engine on engine number two it will be just stopped with special clutch but your engine will continue to operate providing the airplane with uh, electricity and fresh air and to prepare this aircraft for your next flight you don't need to do a lot actually in the cockpit you don't need to recycle the IRS system you don't need to do a lot of actions on overhead panel you just put your automatic flight control system and you just put the computer your next flight route then that's all you're ready for your fueling we have just 5000 kilograms of fuel tank so 2500 kilos 2500 kilos totally five tons and the refueling process for this kind of capacity it's quite fast now i was working in garuda indonesia we had turnarounds for 30 minutes and believe me it was more than enough for this airplane also atrs do not need the ground air starters ground air starters are the huge machines which blow the compressed air into the engines just to start them on the jets on this turboprop aircraft we have electric starters on both engines so speaking in general guys this aircraft is self-sustained and it's perfect for remote area operations where you don't have ground facilities for jet aircraft and next we go to the maximum 35 flight level for atr and it's 250 means that's your maximum level that you can fly on atr well in ukraine i was able to fly this high but in indonesia i wasn't because the temperature on that levels are so high that the turboprop aircraft just unable to get there so for indonesia i was flying around level 170 180 as usual and as you can see you always fly at lower levels compared to jet airplanes so why did i put good things well the lower you fly the less differential pressure you have inside the airplane the lower you fly the lower cabin altitude you have and the higher humidity you have inside the passengers compartment and the flight deck so it's better for your health and you have much less cosmic and solar radiation at those levels so it's much better as i said for your health and here we go to why this airplane is so popular why it's most produced commercial turboprop airplane nowadays fuel 
fuel consumption. This airplane is very efficient. For first hour during climb you burn like 800 kilos for two engines. In the cruise at levels near to level 250 you burn just 600 kilos for two engines. It's unbelievable. For ATR 42 it's even less and on ATR 72 you can carry 70 passengers. That's quite a lot. Speaking about my Indonesian experience guys, people in Southeast Asia live on islands mostly so to get from one island to another you need to cover a lot of distance and it will take you many days to travel by boat and just few hours traveling by airplane imagine just how efficient this airplane is there so that's why it's very popular on Southeast Asia and here on the bottom we have reliability well this airplane is very reliable even though it has some uh, crashes connected to the icing system but after those uh, the ATR modernized the icing system and they put the special regulations for the pilots how to avoid these cases so then I was flying ATR for seven long years I have never had any problems with the malfunctions with the problems with the icing system even though I used to fly in Siberia when we had very uh, severe icing sometimes but it just performed very well. And now let's move to not so good things. First we have the same, avionics. The avionics on ATR is very advanced, but it's also vulnerable to some kind of electrical shortcuts, etc. So sometimes uh, I'm speaking about the Ukraine operation that I was flying in uh, Uter, Ukraine, especially in the winter. When you come to the airplane cockpit, then you come into the cockpit, you may see some kind of malfunctions, but then you totally reset the aircraft, then you turn all the electric electricity on the aircraft off and you turn it on again. You see, everything is working again. But that happened on the ground only and we had never had any issues flying the airplane. So we just reset it. Everything is working right now, okay, maybe you just warm the aircraft up with the auto mode engine operation, then the avionics got warm, it starts to operate and you can fly. I heard the same stories for Embraer, Bombardier, for Airbus, so avionics is very advanced but sometimes you need just to reset it uh, for the normal operation. In Indonesia mostly we hadn't have such an issues because there's a warm climate and the all airplanes were new. The next engines. They're nice, they're quite reliable, they're well made, but I would say they're underpowered. The engines are quite okay near to the ground where the air is most dense, but after passing let's say for low one to zero, you just get into struggle to get the nice vertical speed to reach your economical flight level very fast uh, but they are very efficient so lack of power but nice fuel efficiency i would say and if you compare atr engines with the bombardier q400 the atr competitor the q400 has a superb powerful engines here we have efficient engines but as i said before the atr promises to make a new version s with a more powerful engines next is no side windows you just cannot open it it's blocked uh, on boeings you can open it on air buses you can open it on atr no you just have some air supplies on the bottom on the top but it gives you nothing sometimes we we'll open the cockpit emergency hatch behind to get some fresh air supply but if you work near to equator believe me it's very hot airplane inside and the auto mode the single engine auto mode operation gives you a little bit but not as much as for example the boeing 737 with apu here we have handling and we also had a handling before and i told you that this airplane is well controlled but it should be controlled in neatly and precise manner especially atr 72 because it has a very long tail and the possibility of tail strike increases dramatically it has even tail bumper the tail to reduce the risk of damaging the fuselage 
Also, the aircraft pitch is negative, so during approach you have pitch around minus one or minus one and a half degrees. So you really need to flare the aircraft to avoid your noise wool touching the runway first. But then you get used to this airplane, believe me, it handles well. And here again we have operation here and it was already operation where I told you that this aircraft is self-sustained, it doesn't need a lot of ground facilities. Uh, that makes this aircraft to operate really in a really fast manner with a 30 minute turnarounds. Uh, but it has also the opposite side. So the other side and not so good side for pilots is that sometimes you fly even 12 flights, 12 legs per day. Well, some of airlines, they just restrict it. For example, then I was working in Garuda, Indonesia, I was restricted to fly six flights per day which was quite okay for me but in some airlines you fly as much as 12 flights per day because on this type of airplanes you rarely fly more than one hour flight and you have very short turnarounds so the things are like this hey guys it's happening again we have 250 here flight level 250 and also we have it in advantages in good size i say the lower you fly the healthier you are but why did I put to not good things? Well guys, flying these low flight levels, you will be faced with thunderstorms, you will be faced with icing conditions. The modern jet airplanes usually fly as high as flight level 410, so it's okay for them to overfly some thunderstorms, but for ATR, believe me, all the thunderstorms are yours. So then I was working on ATR in the summertime, in the rainy season of Indonesia, for example, I took a lot of fuel to avoid all these thunderstorms. It's happening again and again. Manuals here, but it was on a good side. Manuals as well. Dennis, what are you doing with us? You just told that the manual structure is fantastic. Well, the structure is fantastic, but the text is not. Then I first opened the Boeing 737 manual. I was just in shock, guys. I was in shock in what proper way in what nice and understandable language the Boeing wrote the manual. For ATR you just sometimes read FCOM, Flight Crew Operation Manual, and you understand nothing. It seems like they did the Google Translate in from French into English. I don't know. The Boeing from this side, from the language, is much better compared to ATR manuals. Boeing explains everything in more simple way, but ATR structure manual, the manual structure is still better. And the last disadvantage for ATR, and not only for ATR, but for all turboprop airplanes is pilot salary. The ATRs are original turboprops, so the pilots usually join to fly them at the beginning of their pilot career, as I did before myself and you shouldn't expect high salary at that period of operation. And even though ATR sells its airplanes very well, it's best seller turboprop commercial airplane nowadays, there are still far more jet airplanes operating all around the world. And that makes jet airplanes operators to compete with each other for the pilots, making the pilot salary for jet airplanes higher compared to turboprop airplanes. But also guys, in some kind of occasional cases you might find the good contracts even for the ATR with a good salary. For example, in one of the airlines, I won't tell you the name, well, they were in desperate need of the pilots, uh, especially for instructors, so they rose the salary even higher than they pay for Boeing 737 instructors. So, but it's kind of occasional case, guys. Mostly pilots who fly turboprop airplanes are willing to go for the jets because the salary is higher and the possibility to find the job is also much higher. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you have something to add, please write the comment below and we discuss with you. Of course, if you have some questions, you may ask me just in the comments below and I'll answer your questions. Also subscribe to my Instagram and follow me here. Subscribe, like if you like this video and hope you have a great time.